just go for you know. Well, I wanted it to be a completely different experience. I didn't want it to look or feel or sound like John Carpenter's movie because we already have that movie and we all love that movie, so it had to be a completely different thing. Here, I aim to comment on Rob Zombie in regards to his filmmaking career. I also hope to expose him for the liar and traitor he is to the fans who worship him. Specifically, how he slumped so low as to destroy a classic horror franchise. Trick or treat. Rob Zombie's reimagining of Carpenter's 1978 classic Halloween must sadly be consigned to the former category, and it's not even a very interesting or suspenseful trick at that. Take the lamest Halloween sequel out there, and you found yourself a better horror movie than this one. Anyone can trace Picasso. The only good thing in this terrible remake, so rock and roll, that can only be made by Rob Zombie, is the music. Since the setup is long to the point of tedious, and the movie simply degenerates into brainless gore with no imagination or real tension. Nope! Wrong again! <laughs> to merely compare Halloween 2007 to the film that inspired it, it's absolutely ridiculous. Rob Zombie made a completely different film. And he even went on record to say that had the movie not been a Halloween film, he would have been compelled to make a movie about a 10 year old serial killer. The beginning of the film was essential for telling the story of Michael Myers. Not John Carpenter's Michael Myers, but Rob Zombie's Michael Myers. The backstory is not a time filler, it's a damn backstory. Rob Zombie split the movie up into three sections. The first section, Young Michael Myers, played by Dave Fairch. And he gave a backstory to a character who, for the most part, was very mysterious. Was it necessary? No. But it was a nice addition to the film. Section 2, Smith's Grove Sanitarium. The growth of Michael Myers, he goes in as a young kid and comes out a WWE superstar. Incredible. Tyler Mayne is a monster. Nobody knows what he was fed in Smith's Grove Sanitarium, but if I had to guess, plenty of vegetables, maybe some protein bars, peanut butter, protein powder, uh, maybe some bodyweight exercises, and, and that leaves us with the giant Michael Myers we saw make his way back to Haddonfield. And of course the third and, and final section of the film, Haddonfield. A lot of people complained about how modern the film felt. It would be kind of rare to have the same 1978 vibe from the original, unless the film was to take place in that time. It doesn't surprise me that it was shot the way it was. I wouldn't expect anything less from Rob Zombie. So what is it about the film that people don't like? Michael's childhood. It's a big thing. Aside from delving into what could have been the cause for his killings, they put him into a white trash family. And I'm not gonna lie, the cursing is extreme. In like a minute and 50 seconds, I counted 16 curse words, and that's not even all of it. It gets a lot worse as you go on. Yeah, whose fault is that? Oh my god, you're pathetic. Oh, the whore with the big tits hanging down to her knees? Maybe I'll choke the chicken first while I snorkel all over them flappy ass tits. Good, we'll have a good fucking time. I will. I hope she likes cripples. Bitch, I will crawl over there and I will skull fuck the shit out of you. Oh, I'll get the crutches for you. But then again, it's a horror film. You're not bringing your Christian family to see the film. It's meant to be extreme. After all, Rob Zombie directed it. But if you can go from watching The Devil's Rejects to this film and be surprised with how it came out, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's, it's, it's a Rob Zombie film. Remakes are almost always controversial. Regardless of how the film turns out, fans will always come back with a bad taste in their mouth. And, and there are fans of John Carpenter's classic and, and fans of both films. But there are also people who believe there can't be two Halloween films. The cast was also a big deal, as many people put it, once again, Rob Zombie is hiring his friends to play more white trash people. You seem to have a family on all your movies. You, you bring the same, same actors along to your, your projects. How do you think that's helped you? Well, I mean, I think everyone does that. All, a lot of directors do that. This, this movie, I brought in a lot of new people, like Malcolm McDowell, for instance. I mean, actually, most of the cast is a lot of new people. But I like to try to jam as many of my friends in there, too. Awesome. All right, because you can trust them. I personally don't see what's wrong with that. Hiring your friends is a good thing, and we can agree, these guys and girls are well capable actors. I mean, Brad Dourif is hilarious, William Forsythe, Danny Trejo, and co come on, Sid Haig. I'll admit, he didn't need to be in the film, but fuck it, it shouldn't really alter your opinion too much. Chester the Graveyard Keeper isn't a significant enough role to make a difference. Also, I can't really bring up the cast without mentioning Joe Grizzly, I, I fucking love his line. It's Joe Grizzly, bitch. I can't do it, but I get it. Fans are protective of the original film. Why fix something if it isn't broken? But th this is the entertainment world, and Halloween isn't untouchable. The franchise has proved to us that it's all done for money, and Zombie isn't coming in to do something that other films didn't already do. There are plenty of people who, I'm sure behind the scenes, pulled all the strings to make some of the Halloween sequels, and 
Do you really think they cared what happened after they cashed their checks? Because I don't. A lot of people were unsure of how they felt in regards to Danielle Harris going topless in the film. I guess going from her younger role as Jamie Lloyd to Annie Brackett is a bit of a change, and I can't lie, it's understandable, but she would have been around 30 years old at the time of filming, so it's truly up to her what kind of role she wants to take. All we can do is respect her decision. And also, that goes for Hannah or Hall, who played Judith Myers too. The character of Dr. Loomis is also a focal point for debate. Many fans found the character to be tasteless and nothing like the original, but I can agree, it was a total different character than we were used to, but once again, no surprise. I mean, Malcolm McDowell had to make the character his own. There's no point in merely copying the character in every way. These eyes do not see what you and I see. Behind these eyes one finds only blackness, the absence of light. These are the eyes of a psychopath. Laurie Strode, played by Scout Taylor Compton. Laurie Strode comes off as a seemingly innocent girl, much like Jamie Lee Curtis, but she has her moments that go to show that once again, this is a Rob Zombie film. And in my personal opinion, it's extremely hard to compete with Jamie Lee Curtis and I think Scout Taylor Compton is a great actress and her portrayal was very good, but once again, it's really hard to compete with Jamie Lee Curtis so you have to give her props for that one. The ending of the film had us believe Michael was killed off, a shot to the head, and that's not a bad way to go. But little did we know, the 28th of August 2009, we'd see Michael return. Your opinion is subjective, meaning you can't be wrong about thinking the movie is bad. It's your personal opinion, and although I do feel like I need to stress one important thing to think about when sharing your hatred for the film to the public. The changes that Rob made for his version of Michael Myers was not treading on the legacy of the original character. It was merely made to offer a point of comparison. The movie is in a place where both movies can exist and be respected simultaneously. Whether or not you choose to respect Rob's work is up to you, but the film was made from his vision and it's a taste of who Rob truly is, and there's no point in making your own film if you're not bold enough to put your own spin on it. You need to make your work yours or you won't truly be proud of what you've done. I had to make this video because I felt like so many people were kind of hating on Rob Zombie's Halloween when in reality it's not, you know, affecting the original in any way. It's kind of just giving you two different versions, an updated version and I guess a more or less old classic version of, of Michael Myers. I don't think the movie really done any harm at all, it's truly just a different version of Michael Myers and it's more of a gritty and, and, and gory version of Michael Myers, but if you're not into it, you're not into it. I'm not here to say you're wrong, I just wanted to point out some things that I guess people were saying about the movie and anyway, if you did like the video, leave a like on it. If you didn't dislike it, it's truly up to you. Uh, I, I don't want to bash your, your opinion on the film, honestly I really don't, but I, I just wanted to say that for those saying that the film is, you know, posing any threat to the, to the original film, it's really not. It's just a different version of Michael Myers altogether.